Good, y'all. Hope everybody's well. Uh, let's see here. Wow, that's weird. Hmm. Yep, this is the night where everything goes strange. My whole system is acting a fool. Uh, hold on one second. Let me see what. My apologies. I don't know what what's going on. My whole system is acting a fool. Uh, I guess it is as upset with me as many others for being gone for so long. I apologize for that. Hope you guys are well. Like, share, subscribe, join, and donate. Support the channel if you will, so we continue to bring you this independent black male thought. Um, Y'all know what it is, man. It's been it's been nuts, man. This last um, month. I had to meet a book contract due date. Um, so I pretty much got that wrapped up, but it's a little crazy um, in that. And I think I mentioned to you guys before, uh, I'm chairing two search committees to hire a couple of people at Fresno State and Africana Studies. And anybody who's ever ran a search committee knows that's a great deal of work. So I'm doing two of them at the same time. Um, but the good news, um, well, that is good news, actually. It's going well. But the really good news is um, as of today, uh, my son is confirmed at the university of his choosing. Now, obviously, this is YouTube, so I ain't going there in terms of where he's going, but he's got his number one pick school. So as of today, I, uh, you know, put in the money to confirm that. So he is officially starting in the fall, you know, and he just just got his driver's license a couple weeks ago. So that was six months of me and the passenger side screaming my head off. Um, well, at least the first couple months, but uh, got the driver's license, got officially, rec you know, uh, got the status officially in the position of a uh, freshman next year in college. So I'm real proud of him, real proud of him. Shout out to Rakim, You're doing a great job, son. Very proud. So that's, it's been a lot going on in terms of that. We got eight uh, people uh, interviewing for the position this month. So that's going to be crazy. And then, of course, right after that in May, finals, exams, the whole deal. So it's going to be a busy little period. That being said, um, I did miss y'all. Um, and I appreciate the support. Many of you extended. A lot of you guys sent me messages trying to make sure I was alive, <laughs> make sure things are going well, uh, sending your appreciation for past things that I've done. I really appreciate that. Shout out to Blood Crow. Um, 
Yeah, it's been a minute. Jay Cleveland, much appreciated putting the word out on the support. What's up, Lamar? Um, let me see. What's up, Mike? Keep it 100. What's good, Marcus? Kiel, what's up? Um, yeah, Vicky, I talked to Jason. We're going to work it out. Uh, let me see. Paul, what's good? Ron, Shadow Observer, what's going on? Mark, good to see you in here, man. Um, Donnie, what's going on? Omar. Joe, what's up? Uh, Layman's Journal. Always good to see you in here, man. And if y'all aren't hip to it, try and get on this Facebook page. He'll be dropping it <laughs> just like he does on the show. So support Layman's Journal. Support Keep It 100. If you haven't been following Marcus, uh, of course, support to the Green Gorilla Channel. Support Dr. Ronald Neal. Support BGS Ibmore. Support all the brothers who are doing the work you respect. And make sure you're subscribed. Um, but yeah, man, Clutch and Stick, what's going on? Ghetto user, what's up? Brandon, appreciate that support. It says, great to see you live again. Yeah, man, been a minute. Passport OG, what's good? Good to see you in here. Uh, support the Passport OG channel. Dardar, what's up? Busy Mike, you know. Um, yeah, the toxic masculinist. <laughs> what's up? <laughs> Salute, reading your, reading your living a fractured reality, reality paper. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, let me know what you think when you get a chance. Uh, email me your thoughts. What's up, Busy Mike? Um, Mark, appreciate the congratulations. Hey, ruin the building with the support. Appreciate that. Uh, Spain man, what's good with you? Yeah. Donnie with the support says kudos to your son. I uh, still remember turning in my acceptance letter to undergrad. I know you're a proud father, real proud, man. I don't know how I'm going to act on the day of, you know. Matter of fact, this weekend, we heading out for him to get his first tour. So that's going to be one thing. But yeah, man, when he when he checks out entirely, and I, I drive back to the house and I'm like, you know, you hear that silence. That's when I'm that's when the rubber hits the service surface. Uh, what's up, Jay Cleveland? Appreciate that support again. Getting the word out incognito Negro. What's up? Well, let's get it in. You know, uh, first things first. I want to talk about before we jump into the primary subject. I haven't done my sacred black masculine and masculine series in a little minute. And as I said, you know, many a time it's organic. It comes as it comes. It is what it is. Um, so let me go ahead and put up this young man here. This is an article you can find on the New York Post. You can probably find it in a number of places, but that's the one I'm going to read from today. It says, 16-year-old dies rescuing kids stuck in undercurrent in Florida. You know what I'm saying? Uh, an Atlanta teen and older family friend uh, both drowned after the 16-year-old selflessly jumped into action um, you know, uh, to rescue four younger children stuck in an undercurrent while on a trip to Florida last week. Bryce Brooks was with relatives in Pensacola for spring break when his life was cut short after he dove into the ocean to help four kids stranded in the ocean. His grieving family said Monday. During the heroic rescue, Brooks went under and family friend Charles Johnson II went to help the high schooler, but Johnson also died. Brooks' stepfather, Shivy Brooks, said during a press conference, uh, the selflessness that it takes for someone to make such a sacrifice to do so at only the age of 16. We're so proud as parents how our son has shown up in this moment, Shibi Brooks said. Let it be amplified that Atlanta developed kids that would give up their life for others that they didn't even know, right? Man, so this is Bryce Brooks, right? Jumped into the water to save some kids. Said Bryce is a hero. He literally saved the lives of four kids at the expense of his own, and the world should know. Other adults on the beach were able to retrieve both teen and adult, and life-saving measures were taken on the beach, Shibi Brooks said. The two were also airlifted to the hospital where they were pronounced dead. Bryce died from cardiac arrest, his stepfather said, according to the newspaper. The young man leaves behind his parents and a younger brother. Johnson leaves behind three sons and a wife, the Brooks family said. The incident happened in a part of the Perdido Key where no lifeguards were stationed. What I want uh, the world to know about our son and Uncle Chuck is that one thing is for sure is they loved each other. Mother Crystal Brooks said. Yeah. So shout out to this young man, right? Who went out his way, saved the lives of some children. Something that I'm told that black men don't do, right? They don't protect, they don't sacrifice. And see, we all know this is gaslighting and this is bullshit, right? This young man did exactly what black men have been doing for the longest and shout out to him. I'm, 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 I'm definitely saddened that he had to pass at such a young age, but um, I'm also inspired by his example and I want to shout him out. So 
Um, if you haven't had a chance to check this article, go look him up. Uh, read, read, for it, read it yourself. Share it. Bryce Brooks is his name. Um, shout out to you, young man. Good job. You know, lived well at a young age already. So that being said, uh, let's get to it. Now, the question that y'all see, um, you've seen on the uh, thumbnail, right? Are reverse gender roles better? Now, why are we talking about that? Well, it comes from a recent study that was published. Let me go ahead and see if I can share it on the screen. I can tell you my system has been acting weird. It's been freezing uh, at various points. So I hope we can get through this amicably. Uh, here you go. Let me see if there's a way to enlarge this a little bit. All right. So this is you can find on SciPost.org. Right. This is dated April 8th of this year. Right. So this is this is brand new. Right? New re research helps explain why relationship satisfaction tends to be lower in role reversed heterosexual couples. Right? Lower. Hmm. Okay. So recent research published in sex roles explore the consequences of heterosexual couples who do not follow traditional gender norms where the male is the primary provider. The study findings indicate that in that in role reversed relationships, the woman is seen as more dominant and agentic while the man is perceived as weaker. Additionally, women in role reversed relationships are viewed as less likable and men in such relationships receive less respect. The study highlights the ongoing influence of conventional gender norms on relationships and the potential hurdles couples who depart from these norms encounter. So basically, in a nutshell, they want to talk about uh, the dynamic that's become so popular since the 1980s. Uh, it comes along with the, uh, you know, so-called liberation of women. The idea being that they can embrace a variety of gender roles and men really. It's been a one side one sided dynamic. Right. We know women have been able to embrace a wide variety of gender roles. Men, not so much. And this article kind of, or this study kind of confirms that, right? Uh, the, the, ex the normal expectation of men is that they continue to play a 1950s role where even if she is the quote unquote breadwinner, he still needs to make more in some kind of fantastical way. He needs to make more than her, but she's the breadwinner and she can work or not work. She can have a child or not have a child. She can adopt or abort. She can, you know, stay at home and not work, you know, whatever. Like women have been able to frame this in a way where they can do pretty much whatever they want. The question as far as men are concerned is that the expectation up to now has been that men need to be able to provide on par with her or more, right? And if he doesn't provide, he's seen as less than, particularly by her. And so this, this study is examining relationships where women or men are in those kind of quote unquote weaker positions, providing less if if at all, and she's the primary breadwinner. So let's see what else they say about this. Right? The results imply that gender stereotypes in the environment can impact the perceptions of men and women about their partners, potentially leading to negative relationship outcomes. Right? Despite generational change in Western societies, conventional gender stereotypes persist. You can already tell the language they're using, what, what their value system is, what this, so the people who are, are summarizing this study are already letting you know. And I would say the study is consistent with their values as well. The, the use of the term gender stereotypes already lets you know that they don't see gender roles as anything more than just stereotypes. And they want things to be uh, such that we can move pieces around, everybody can wear everybody's hats and it should all be the same, right? But it's all the same until shit go down. And I can tell you this, having been married before, that when things get difficult, when things get challenging, especially if they become threatening in some manner on a physical level, everybody looks at you. Everybody looks at you, right? When I was a grad student and I was married, especially after my son was born, but it, born, but it happened before that too. It, you know, I, I'm working multiple jobs. I'm trying to, you know, stay in grad school, make sure everything's happening. If the lights went out, you know, and we, we, you know, people wanted to know what was going on when they would call the house to find out why the power was out. They didn't, they didn't call my wife. They called me. Right. The idea was that I failed. Right. And then I needed to fix it. There was no, you know, social expectation that she's just as culpable. She didn't No. When shit gets difficult, they look at you as a man. And to call it just a stereotype gives it this, this kind of superficial layer to it 
but that's not what this is. It goes deeper than that. Shout out to Inye Wakoma. He says, brothers, so glad to see you back on the live. The last few weeks has been bananas online, so much posturing and chaos. I mainly come back to the Black Man's Fear for work like yours. Need your perspective in the space. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that, man. I've only been able to pop my head in from time to time. It's been crazy. I ain't going to say I kept up with everything, but, um, you know, I'll say this much. We got work to do. And fixating on what other people want us to talk about takes the conversation away from where we need it to be. So that being said, you know, I'm doing the work that I think we need to do. And that being, you you know, everybody up here needs to focus on the work of improving the quality of life for black men and boys, however you approach that. But don't let anybody distract us from the conversation with bullshit deflections. I, I'm sorry. I can't go with it. We got to do what we got to do. Anyway, let me continue with this. So um, let me see. All right. Despite generation, general, general, bleh, generational changes in Western societies, conventional gender stereotypes persist, suggesting men prioritize providing for their families while women prioritize nurturing them. Studies indicate that when couples reverse these traditional gender roles, they are likely to experience adverse outcomes, such as reduced marital satisfaction, increased likelihood of divorce, and lower relationship quality. As expected, role reversed couples, role reversal couples, uh, face more significant relationship challenges in countries that are that strongly adhere to traditional gender roles. Melissa Vink and her colleagues sought to examine the underlying mechanisms that account for adverse relationship consequences experienced by partners in role reverse relationships, particularly in cases where women have achieved a higher social status than their male counterparts. The researchers hypothesized that the degree to which women and men are penalized for violating status norms and role reverse relationships may elucidate why they encounter more difficulties and are less socially accepted than couples adhering to traditional roles. Focusing on relationships in which the woman has surpassed her male partner in social status, we draw on the status incongruity hypothesis to argue that these relationships may be more precarious because of the negative perceptions and expectations that people have about the status divisions that run counter to traditional gender norms and role reverse relationships. Bink and her colleagues wrote, you know, so basically what they're trying to say so far is that the only reason these relationships don't work, the only reasons they, they end in divorce, the only reason that they, that they don't thrive is because everybody in the society is so wedded to the traditional model that they don't allow for it to exist. Right. And they leave this idea of people um, not supporting it as just a, a, a stereotype. It's a social pressure. And if people would just get off that, everything would be fine. And we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about that in a minute. The research team explored whether heterosexual couples in role reverse relationships face potential criticism from others due to the status differences that challenge traditional gender hierarchies. See, that's the other thing they're saying. They're saying that all the pressure comes from outside, and because it comes from outside, these couples just can't manage to stay together. As if the couples themselves, the people in selves, it, themselves in the relationship don't have problems with the roles, even the women who are, quote unquote, enjoying the breadwinner position. But let's see. In two studies, the researchers recruited 223 individuals living in the United States, 269 individuals living in the Netherlands to assess how people uh, perceive and evaluate couples who have reversed traditional gender roles. In a third study, the researchers re uh, recruited 94 heterosexual couples in the Netherlands who had been in a relationship for at least one year to examine the potential mechanisms that affect relationship quality within role reverse relationships. The results indicate that individuals perceived women and role reverse relationships is more dominant, men is weaker, uh, leading to the negative assessments of their relationship quality. In other words, women with high status and higher status than their males, they've already said this, um, you know, to a penalty. Uh, okay. So if they had higher status than their male partners, they were vulnerable to a penalty for their dominance. While men with a lower status may face a penalty for their weakness, these penalties contribute to the perception that a role reverse relationship is less fulfilling. But then, see, part of the problem is that, you know, it's not just that the society will not support this dynamic. The people in the relationship often want, and I speak for men in a particular dynamic, and this is this should be a caution for you. If this is a role you choose to take, you can bet that what tends to come with it is disrespect. And, and contrary to this particular study, I'm not talking about the disrespect that comes from outside. I'm talking about the dis disrespect that comes from the person you're with, right? And this is something that I think we need to really understand. Uh, Jay Daniels, appreciate that support. Says, Doctor, you need to give your position on the Pearl situation. I just did. I just did. 
couple seconds ago, a couple minutes ago. Uh, Phipps, appreciate the support. His gender roles are based in biology. Feminism made society so arrogant that playing God was seen as normal. Meanwhile, women still reserve the right to be hypergamous. <laughs> they do. <laughs> and will blame you <laughs> if it doesn't go well. Anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> perceptions of dominance and weakness were linked to reduced levels of relationship satisfaction within role reverse couples. The study emphasized the potential consequences for couples who deviate. And they go on and on with the same kind of uh, narrative, right? Specifically, both men and women in role reverse relationships perceive the man as the weaker one and the woman as the more dominant one. The researchers explain the perception that the man is weaker in one is the weaker one in a relationship may explain in part why couples in role reverse relationships experience lower relationship satisfaction. A lot of this is, is fairly repetitive. The name of the study is penalized for challenging traditional gender roles, why heterosexual relationships in which women wear the pants may be more precarious. Authored by, authored by Melissa Vink, Bell Dirks, Naomi Elmers, Tanja or Tanja Vander Leap. Uh, I don't know if I pronounced any of those names right. Um, shout out to Ghetto User. Appreciate that support. It says we are blessed to have you and other scholars providing sanity in this space. The only reason I show up is for you and other scholars analysis. Man, I appreciate that, Ghetto User. Thank you. Um, yeah. So in essence, this particular piece is basically saying, and they keep reiterating, that the big problem with role reverse relationships is that the society won't support it, right? That's the, that's the basic thrust of their argument. When I would argue that it's not just the society, it's even the people who are advocating for this. See, a woman will marry a man. We've talked about this. When we talk about son husbands and husband sons, right? The son husbands being the bi biological offspring of a woman. And although those relationships generally aren't sexual, they can be where she will take her bio biological son and, you know, basically give him the role that a grown man as a husband should play, even as young as three and four years old. I've seen this kind of thing take place. And then, of course, you have the husband sons where you have women. And that's more aligned with this kind of article. Women that will actually look for men of lower status. Because the idea is that. She's still in position in a position of control. And as a matter of fact, she looks for someone who she can control so that he has no other options. And, and these are extreme cases of this are when you find women that, you know, choose to be with men who are pretty much homeless. You know, I'm not talking about just laying on the street under a trash can or under a bridge. I'm talking about the kind of dudes that are couch surfing from house to house, have all their stuff in a trash bag. They might even have a car. They have enough clothes to look presentable in certain spaces. But when you really start to scratch the surface, you find that these guys are basically hoboing, right? Hobosexuals, you know, it's been a term we've heard last number of years online, right? You'll have women who are doing well, six-figure earners or near that, so on and so forth, who have their lives together. They have a home, they have a car, and often they want to get married, they want to have a child, but they actually go out their way. And this is not all women. This is a very particular subset of women who go out their way to find a man who has lower status, who has lower capability, and they will choose him because of their capacity to rule over him. It's a power grab, right? It's a flex. And if he talks back, if he gets out of pocket, she can get rid of him. But he might be useful for companionship, for sex, maybe even for sperm. She might even go so far as to marry him, uh, divorce him, kick him to the curb and find a way to make him child support, make him pay child support. But the point is, you know, these women will choose men like this very purposefully. But even in those marriages, you'll find that those women often don't respect the men that they've cho they've chosen. The men who are playing the role that they wanted him to play and don't respect them. So I think when we talk about this kind of article, we see a little bit of that. But there are a couple of things I wanted to add to this, right? I want to add to this. Now, the first one, it's going to look like a joke, but it's not. I'm actually playing it for a reason. So let's let's see if we can watch this closely. Uh, give me a, a, a one if you can hear it once I play it. Here we go. Right. <laughs> Run. 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 
Run. Run. Run. I know you guys saw that. Um, the first time I saw it, I thought it was hilarious. <clears throat> and it is in many respects. But one of the things I noticed after reflecting on it were the gender roles, right? There were at least a couple of instances where the men literally picked up the women they were with, put them over their shoulders, and ran. Now, to what extent this is a prank? Hey, I'll admit I'm Gen X. I'm susceptible to watching some of these videos, and I can't always tell what's prearranged and what isn't. But what I think I find interesting about stuff like this, though, is when men do something like this in regard to protection, it's, you know, considered normal. It's considered expected. At what point did any of those women, even as a subconscious act, think to protect those men? Right? We're in a society where gender roles are supposed to be irrelevant, right? They're supposed to be interchangeable. You know, they can apply to anybody. because Nobody's a protector. Nobody's a nurturer. It's all just up in the air. But when the shit hits the fan... We start to see that there are not only things that people do that go deeper than just how they're socially conditioned on the surface, but also what's expected of them. In each case where a man picked up a woman and ran, she went flat as a board. She didn't fight him. She didn't scream and push him away. What'd she do? Fell over her shoulder, over his shoulder, right? You had one instance where the dude actually moved up to fight to protect her. He pushed her behind him and walked up to fight whatever this thing was. We saw several instances, right, of this kind of thing. One dude, uh, they both took off running. His girl fell. He ran back and helped her up, right? These are the kinds of social expectations that are expected of you as a man. So even though we're in an era where we're told that everything is everything, there really are no gender roles, and if anybody has flexibility in their gender roles, it's her. Not a lot of conversation about what men's roles are, meaning you're still expected to play the same role. But if we do try and tweak that and put you in a position of where you're a bit servile, you're a bit feminine, quote unquote, or whatever, yeah, you'll be socially punished for that. And that's what I mean. What you saw in that video clip, joke or not, were men who played the role that, that was expected of them, right? You tell me what happens in a relationship with any of those people if the dude takes off running and leaves her standing there. Yeah, you find out it's a joke and all that good stuff, but what happens to that relationship? Right? What are the so social expectations of him? Right? It's still the same. We still have the same expectations and we act like we don't, but they're there. Even if it's a joke, right? If you actually act out of a, 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 a traditionally socially expected masculine role, especially in regard to protection, you'll find that you'll, you'll receive very little respect. And if anything, you may lose your relationship in a matter of seconds. Right. Uh, okay. So that being said, that's one dynamic of it. We're gonna look at something else that I think applies to this. Now, this is from a couple of years ago, but I think it's important because it speaks to what's also expected of us in regard to um, what men expect from women. Here we go.
This is a case that came out of Michigan, apparently. Now, this is a couple of years ago. This is 2018, right? Michigan woman arrested after destroying Planet Fitness equipment in a fit of rage. Let me see if I can. Uh, no, here we go. Yeah, there it is. So you can find this on WJLA.com, right? Grand Rapids, uh, Michigan. 20-year-old woman was arrested after flying into a fit of rage, assaulting an employee and destroying equipment at a Planet Fitness in Grand Rapids, uh, M Michigan. A uh, cell phone video uh, depicts the woman screaming at a gym employee behind the front desk, pushing over his computer monitors, ripping electrical cords, and physically confronting the man after he moved out from behind the vet the desk. Grand Rapids uh, authorities say she is being charged with malicious destruction of property, two hundred dollars to a thousand dollars. Right? Front desk employee decided not to press charges over the assault. The gym, however, pressed charges for the destroyed property. Right? Now, part of the reason I'm playing this is one, it's very clear, right, that her behavior is not what's expected of women. But I think the thing that stood out to me watching this was the the young man's composure, right, the extent to which even in self-defense, he didn't strike her, he didn't really even hit her, he just kind of backed away or whatnot. And at the end of the day, when it was all over, he didn't even press charges. And really, the institution only pressed charges to the, what, the highest extent of $1,000, right? We don't generally hold women accountable which is part of the reason they can play any role they want in a relationship and it's allowed. But for the most part, it's the men's role that becomes a challenge. Now, the article we were re reading from earlier, the study we were reading from, from earlier is trying to suggest to us that women are punished for playing a role that is agentic, as they call it, right? She's an agent and he's a weaker position. They're trying to really highlight that women are punished for this. And they did, admit, they did mention that weaker men are punished for you know, not playing a stronger role. But at the end of the day, what they won't speak to is the extent to which even as a society, we don't hold women accountable for their behavior. So what they're trying to say is, is far, as far as this whole narrative of women being punished, no. women can do what they want. And they've been doing what they wanted for decades. It's men that are actually constricted in our expression. Because even if you try and express yourself in this uh, in some kind of other dynamic, you will be socially punished. Right? Now, this latest one, some of you guys have seen. And uh, I will admit, it, it, it kicked me in the chest the first time I saw it, but I needed to play it here so we could talk about it. Um, but we're going to look in this instance at um, man, male expectations of uh, women in relationships. Here we go. What's up? What's up is why you've been lying to me for 11 years, telling me that DJ is my real son. Why you been lying to me? What have they lying about? I got a DNA test done. A DNA saying what? Saying that he's not my son. Let me see this DNA test. You don't need to see it. I saw it. How DNA test is going to say How you going to be lying to me son? for 11 years? Why would you do that to me? Who? Where's the lie? The I lie is you. DNA you test. are the lie. You have been lying to me for 11 years, having me believe that my son that I've been raising for 11 years is not really my son. Like, how could you do that to me? Like, what, what can you say for yourself right now? What made you get a DNA test? Because I went through your phone. Yeah, and like, talking about me, laughing and bragging, telling your friends that I have no idea that he's really not my son. So I went and got a DNA test done. Like, you think I'm stupid or something? Like, how could you do this to me? You know what? What? You had no business going through my phone and getting You a care DNA more test about me going son. through your phone than you lying to me about... Some, my son I'm not being mine? Are you kidding me right now? Lie. Are you kidding me right now? You care more about being humiliated and me finding out that, that our son is not really my son and that he has him? a different you father. I sure him? have because I thought he was my son. Because you've been lying to me this whole time. What are you it's, talking about? Does it, it matter? It does, does matter. matter. Are you, are you crazy? You what do you mean? That absolutely matters. Like you don't see anything wrong with what you did. Matter. You don't see anything wrong with what you did. You've been matter. lying to me. You've been do sitting you here lying him? to me for for eleven. Of course I love him, but I can't. But you guys can't stay. You can't stay here anymore. What are we gonna love? I don't know. It's not, not my problem. It's not, it's not my problem. It's not my problem. It's not my problem. It's not my problem. You can't stay here. You can't stay here. You can't stay here. 
You can, I don't know. It's not my problem. I did my job. I did my job. I did my job as a dad. I did my job as a dad. You can't stay here anymore. Y'all gotta go. Both y'all, y'all can't stay anymore. No, I'm hurt. I'm hurt. I can't deal with it. I can't deal with it. Y'all can't stay here anymore. Y'all gotta go. Y'all gotta get y'all house. Y'all gotta go. I can't deal with it. I don't, I, I'm putting y'all out. Yes. Who's gonna put I'm gonna put you out. I, I'm gonna put you out. I'm gonna. I will pack your bags myself and put you out of here. I will pack your bags. Y'all can't stay here. You gotta go. You got. You lied to me. You lied to me. You lied to me for eleven years. For eleven years straight, you lied to me, having me believe that he's my son. No, you gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta get up out of here. You gotta get up out of here. No, I can't look at you. I can't look at. No. Y'all gotta go. Y'all gotta go. No. Before I do something crazy, I'm gonna regret. Not, yes. Not yes. You lied to me. You lied to me. Now, I put out my my usual disclaimer. I don't really care if this is a skit. I've known brothers that this has happened to. So as far as I'm concerned, because it happens, it needs to be talked about. Um, I don't personally think it is, but at the end of the day, to me, it doesn't matter. The shit actually happens, right? But here, you know, this highlights, if nothing else, you know, this is the opposite of what men uh, expect from a, a woman in a relationship. Companionship, cooperation, respect, especially if you're taking care of her and her family, right? There should at least be that. This man got none of that. No respect, no appreciation. If anything, she's laughing behind his back about lying to him about whose child it is, right? Chris Rock said it best, you know, said a man's lie is I was at my boy's house last night. He said, a woman's lie is this your baby. And I was like, you know, whole different level. So at the end of the day, looking at this, man, yeah, they kicked me in the chest, right? But it speaks to, you know, the opposite of what we're looking for. Brothers are looking for loyalty. They're looking for honesty. And if they can't find a basic level of respect, they're at a point where they're willing to go wherever they need to go to find it. And I don't, I don't uh, decry them that at all, right? I support that they need to do that. Now, this particular brother, provided that this is real, I feel for him. You know, I've seen other cases in person as well as online, the men who found out. And truthfully, I don't know, it, 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 it especially hits you if you're a parent and you put in around a decade of raising a child. It's hard enough if you had to find out at a, that a newborn wasn't yours. That's hard enough. That's hard enough. 10, 11 years? And look, and one of the things we push for over here on the Onyx Report is we push for uh, DNA testing at birth, right? That this is, should actually be something that's uh, required. It should, be, it, it, it should be law that it takes place. Uh, shout out to Officer Faulkner. I don't know if he's here tonight, but I would tell him um, that if that does happen, they're going to need to increase security in a lot of different places. So I hope he would be able to benefit with his security firm. But at the end of the day, uh, black men need to be liberated. Men in general, but especially black men need to be liberated from this type of manipulation. This goes back, I mean, since time immemorial. You know, people can tell you stories about grandparents, great grandparents, great great grandparents, parents and family secrets about who was and wasn't whose child. Right. And we only hear about the men who, you know, the old. Older men, when they died, and there was a whole nother family that showed up at the funeral. And man, we've heard that story a lot, told over and over again to, de to denigrate men and black men in particular in families. But don't nobody want to talk about, you know, who great grandma lied about. And, and, and much of the time, them, them fathers knew and still took care of family, still put food on the table and received no respect for it. Right. But this brother was actually willing to put them out over it. And that that takes a lot. That takes a lot, you know, but I, I think the ultimate uh, takeaway a lot of people had with watching this video was the gaslighting in the midst of the confrontation. You know, the gaslighting on her part, the dismissal that she'd done anything that, you know, pulling out really superficial um, and, and, you know, meaningless points to argue about, to deflect from the situation and really not be willing to be accountable on any level. Right. You know. Um, at the end of the day, those are the things that, that I think I've heard more people talk about in regard to this. But in terms of role reversal, 
I think what it highlights, uh, you know, in regard to that discussion is that men are also looking for a certain type of behavior in women, right? And when you have somebody that's unwilling to play her role in regard to being cooperative and respectful, right, especially to the greatest degree, the most extreme degrees, at the end of the day, you know, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So you can try and, 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 and step around these gender roles and we can argue that they're just a product of uh, media or social influence and that they should just arbitrarily be done away with. But at the end of the day, I think they're tied to um, behaviors and behavioral practices that are expected in society and in communities that go back hundreds of thousands of years. I don't think it's just a matter of surface level ideas about sexism. I think that's such a trite way of explaining it because women don't seem to give a damn about sexism when it comes to a noise heard in the front room at three in the morning or when there's a security issue of some sort. All of those kind of sexes, see, because they're willing to be sexist toward men in a heartbeat in terms of what's expected of you. The expectation is that in, in a traditional narrative, yeah, she risks her life having a child. He risks his life every day protecting. Because when the shit goes down, he needs to stand up and stand in front of her. That is the expectation. And men have reached a point where it's not that they're unwilling to do it. Because as I see these brothers moving overseas or moving into different dynamics, I still see them playing masculine roles. But they're looking for women to play those roles with who are willing to reciprocate with a basic level of respect, affection, support, cooperation, so on and so forth. That has always been the exchange. The exchange between the masculine and feminine, it's never been one way. Feminists portrayed this. In the article, I think the study I mentioned does this too. It, it, I think it portrays the idea that men are, are failing on their end and women are giving too much, right? Where actually what we're saying over here is that the expectation of men has remained a constant. You still need to be protector and provider no matter what she chooses to do. But what you get in return is her presence. And I think many men are saying, no, that's not enough. And that's never been enough. It's always been an exchange of energy. It's never been a one-way dynamic. And you can't turn around and flip it and say that women should be able to do whatever they want to do. And men need to shut up and keep providing. It doesn't work. So men have found alternatives and they're willing to play that role to women that appreciate it. That's really what a lot of it comes down to. Um, shout out to Philip uh, Deuce. Uh, this is a passport role villain origin story. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is. It is a passport bro villain origin story. That is the perfect uh, description of this. Absolutely. Absolutely. So anyway, I just wanted to hit you all with a short shot. Um, I'm going to try and be back on a little more than not. Like I said, the next month is gonna, still going to be incredibly busy. But, um, you know, the, the book I finished up, I was ugh, I was writing for about 18 hours a day. So, um, you know, I, whatever, however busy it's going to be in the next month, it ain't going to be 18 hours a day busy. So uh, I'll try and be up on here a little more. Um, so shout out to y'all. Appreciate the support. Um, yeah, and we'll let it go from there. So see a number of people. I'm going to go through the chat in a little bit. Please make sure you give me your comments on this. Tell me your thoughts. Let me know uh, what else should be brought to bear in this. And Donnie said it right, man. Insert man here. Absolutely. Right. That's what's expected of, of men in many respects. But there's no fluidity or flexibility to what's expected of you. And if you don't provide it, and it's not just here, let me just say this real quick. It's not even just about protection. It's also about making her feel protected. See, those are two different things. Those are two different things. It's not just that you protect her. But she has to feel protected. It's an extra layer of emotional labor you need to do to make sure she feels protected, even if she is. You know what I'm saying? You could be walking around on the street like we saw in the joke video, the prank video, and you could have a gun on you for protection. You know, doesn't matter. If she doesn't feel protected, she's still going to look down on you. You have to find a way to communicate. And men have become very you know, expert at doing this, communicating in a manner that lets her know that you got her. You're going to take care of her. You're going to make sure she's, you know, all of that. There's a whole science to how men project an aura of protection to the women they, they value, right? That's a whole language unto itself. And men get no credit for providing it. Because again, you can have, uh, you can have three shotguns in the house, guns in every room. And if there's a noise up front 
and you don't communicate with her beyond just protecting her, there's a there's a degree to which you'll still be socially punished. She didn't feel safe, right? So men have had to find to find they've had to learn to express themselves in 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 a manner that makes her feel safe on multiple levels, and they don't get any credit for that. But anyway, appreciate that support, Bill Reed. Salute to you as well. I'll be seeing y'all soon. Y'all have a good one.